speaking of wild animals, I wanted to get your take on everything that's going on right now on the campuses. Uh, mm. Definitely not coordinated. Definitely <laughs> pe people that 100% actually care about Palestine. What do you what do you think is going on with this? Is it just communist? Commie's going to commie? Some of it is genuine protests. It's people that believe in that. Like I, I uh, remarked earlier today, uh, like when I was back in UVM, so groovy UV, you know, with mm -hmm. pot and everything, Birkenstock sandals and everything else <laughs> and the fish. Um, I mean, I was an Obama voter and, and I tended to lean towards supporting Palestine at the time and stuff. Some of it is just youthful indiscretion. So these are genuine protests and people don't mean any harm. They genuinely believe what they're saying. Then there are antagonizers. And then there are people that are pro-Hamas, literally speaking. They really do hate Jews. They are the Zoomerwaffen, as they've been uh, billed yeah. by the uh, lamestream media at this time. And I'm sure that they'll love that moniker. And, uh, but they, uh, they tend to riot and throw their poo at the police. Sort of like Chaz 2.0 or something like that. Yeah. What do you make of, I always find this kind of a, a difficult uh, conversation to have in our space. We're not like the same, but we do share a good chunk of viewers. Yeah. And when I try to say like, no, no, there are actual people that hate Jews in these like encampments. Yes, there like, are. There definitely are. I get a lot of pushback from people like, oh, I don't, I don't understand that. Like if, <laughs> if you're saying that if somebody comes up to you and says, I hate Jews, hail Hitler. <laughs> like, yeah. No, I don't believe you. You're totally trolling or something. OK, yeah, sometimes it is just an edgelord. But, you know, there are people that actually have those views. It's just like uh, if somebody says, you know, curb stomp all Islamists or something like that. Yes, yeah, some of them are just being edgelords. But you have to acknowledge some people genuinely believe it would be best if you nuked the Kaaba. Yeah, uh, it's these, like these post 9 11, views, too. People are like that with Arabs. Exactly. These views aren't common, but they do actually exist. And some people refuse to believe that. Yeah, I, fi I find I get called, even though I'm, I'm just largely non interventionalist about You're a it. You're Zionist. Exactly. I've, I've like, gotten the same shit. I've I've had people say, "Well, why doesn't he just come out in favor of Israel or something like that?" I'm like, "Haven't I spent the whole last year saying I'm not Team Palestine or Israel? I just want the fighting to stop because I don't want people to die." Yeah. Well. Yeah. That's exactly what a Zionist would say. That that's yeah. the that's the tr struggle that I have when I'm trying to tell people like, "Here's a video <laughs> of somebody walking down the street in New York saying Hamas is good." We're all Hamas. I think this person is bad. And they're like, well, what are you, a Zionist? I'm like, well, no, like they can have their protests. That's fine. We've, um, we've, we've reached the most odd inflection point, I think, in modern political history, where uh, if you support Israel, you're a Nazi. Yeah. And if you, if you support Palestine, um, then, then, I don't exactly. You're a communist, or a, yeah, or like a, it doesn't make any sense at this point. It's weird because, and you're you're definitely smarter about this to me. But I'd say, as a layperson, right? Like, there are. Yeah. <clears throat> I I I wonder if optics are ever a thing for people because that's I oversimplify things, and I'm like, well, I don't see a lot of pro Jewish people being completely unhinged, and like having you know building camps and fighting with cops and well i mean if you're if you're jewish do you really want to go to camp would be the <laughs> not again the uh yeah the first time around was very yeah it just was, just was... making a slightly crude joke there but i can't help it yeah well it's <laughs> yeah the um i i just i watch these things and so now one thing i thought was interesting now the cops have been deployed I think oh, I see a liberated zone down below there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Liberated zone. Yeah. Libtard zone. Um, they own we've, nothing. We've, <laughs> we've, we've liberated this by standing here. Yeah. I it's, it's, um, <laughs> it's both hilarious and also deeply sad that like these people are paying $90,000 a year for college and they're this stupid. Like I don't, mm. one thing I thought was interesting though, is, you know, they're marching on them a lot faster than they did for BLM. 
Like they, yeah. they let the BLM people do. I mean, how long was Chaz going and chop months, weeks, at least the autonomous zones, all that stuff. They let go a lot longer than this. Yeah. They're falling in faster because it's becoming more of a culture of war thing. And with BLM, like a lot of people, they just threw their hands up and they said, ah, well, whatever, let them, let them do what they want to do. And I think there was less public outcry about it at the time. People didn't dare to have public outcry. Here, I think more people, because it involves uh, Jews on one hand and also, you know, the colonial sort of Gaza thing on the other hand, I think more people are willing to speak out. So there's more quick action. What do you think about this theory? I think they're, they're just quick. They're quick to squelch this because it looks bad for the Democrats. They're, and, it's for the, optically and, for the, worse. and for the universities as well. Yeah. And they have a lot of clout. Look at look at their endowments. How much money those are worth? Billions. Oh, yeah. fucking hundreds of billions collectively, I think. Yeah. I I I've I wish, pres- I wish that they would give me some of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean like just a Can small small loan, you know, just a small yeah. endowment. Give give me one tenth of one percent of your endowment and I'll <laughs> shut up and go away. Yeah, right, right. I'll go garden and it'll be great and I'll and I'll and I'll just be happy. I, I think that the the now granted they have let it go on for i mean the camps didn't really the encampments didn't really start till this week maybe over the weekend but you know the the kind yeah. of the unrest has been going on for over a week but yeah. it's i think rapid, it's rapidly expanded though it seems because there was uh, like there was new york u there was columbia there were a few others yeah Harvard. mit berkeley there was, there was that one uh, uh student newspaper um reporter actually i think that was at harvard or was it yale i can't remember who got stabbed in the eye actually yes yeah trying with to, the, trying with to the simply trying to simply trying to talk to these people so yeah they're um you know i think it's awfully like at some point gee i, I it's coincidental that this is happening again exactly four years after the last time it's happened only this yeah, time no, it's palestine the, that that timing is totally coincidental yeah, nobody, yeah. Don't nobody antagonized anything. Yeah, nobody antag. Don't ask any questions. The Daily Wire said that's bad. But the you know I I don't I just wonder what like you said I think there are some genuine because I I've met people like that in my life who are like down for whatever cause just like actual old school hippie people who are like this is a part of my weekend I'm gonna go protest the new this that or the other this is their lifestyle they're harmless. Yeah. Um, and then you have this like militarized, uh, violent, aggressive, like marching in the streets with flares, marking, marching on NYPD. Um, I, I, I wonder where for me, it's like, I want to support their first amendment, right? But it feels like they're going past that when you're marching, when you're blocking bridges, when you're doing, yeah, it doesn't feel like a first amendment issue. I mean, it is, but I don't, I think you yeah. go too far. I think I talked about this earlier. It's like um, if you want to have like an encampment at Columbia or something, you're not preventing anyone from going to class. You're not attacking anyone. You're not threatening to attack anyone. I would say if you're paying the tuition, as long as you're a Columbia student, go ahead, do whatever you want. When you begin to block traffic or throw rocks at the police or throw your poo at other people or threaten to kill people because they wear a yarmulke or because they wear a hijab or something like that, I can't get behind that. It's it's, yeah. it's it's a fairly clear, easily clear delineation, you know? Yeah, I think when you're, you know, what I think is going to be funny is um, what's going to happen is if these students are smart, you know, I, you know, especially these Jewish students who are known to be prudent with financial skills, they should be demanding. Oh, they're, they're, they're careful of that stereotype. On the, <laughs> yeah, on the live yeah that's true. Not all. I happen to know. <laughs> no, I happen no. to know Jewish people are terrible with money. I, I happen to know Jews that have gone bankrupt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Jesus. I definitely don't believe all. But it will be funny if um, that uh, if they I've been seeing talks of uh, them suing for tuition refunds. And at ninety thousand dollars a year. I think they should. Some of them if should. you can't Some go to class. Should. Yeah. You can't yeah, go to if, class. You pay $90,000 for an in, in-person education. And because the school has facilitated these lunatics, some of them lunatics, who are prohibiting that, you should you should sue for, I think they should all sue. 
Yeah, they restored uh, their hybrid system so that some sometimes it would be like you just, uh, you know, not in person. It would be like you're in your dorm room on your computer, you're taking a class. Um, I'm wondering, uh, for a lot of courses, that'd be fine. You're taking English. Sure. Okay, well, you know, you read your books, you do the tests and stuff like that. You can do it all online. There's no problem. Uh, I, I think that that's a great thing, actually, for the educational system, making it digital only for a lot of things. But what if you're a science student? Can mm -hmm. you dissect a squid um, digitally? Well, you know, with maybe. AI, maybe, yeah. May, yeah, maybe they can make that work, but uh, there's no substitute for in-person learning. Medical if students, you, stuff medical, like that. Exactly. Medicine, the, the physical sciences, um, mm -hmm. engineering or something like that. You're not always going to be able to do that from your dorm room. I would have loved it if I had gone to college back uh, in my day, you know, long ago, of course, the 1800s, I'm old, yeah. I'm an, uh, yeah, yeah the, no, the 1700s yeah. in my case, yeah. uh, <laughs> I would have loved it if it had been remote learning. I would have said, oh, I can sit in my dorm room and eat snacks and just fill out this paperwork. Yeah. Hell part yeah, of that sounds fucking great. Yeah. I went, um, I got my master's degree remotely at a four year college. Like, so I, I didn't get it from like one of those diploma factories. Like yeah. I went the same place I went to undergrad. I got my master's degree and I lived two miles away and I never was on campus for, um, these kids though, you could also make the argument that part of that $90,000 a year college is including like university, like part of that is baked in these facilities that I can no longer use. So I can't use the gym. I can't go to the yeah. cafeteria. I can't, Go to so the library. You're not, so you're not allowed to eat. You're not allowed to read. So why are you even going to the university at that point? Right. Yeah. Yeah. This I is think... this is this is why people should take advantage of the state college system and not go to one of these big universities because those tend to be the hotbeds of bullshit. <laughs>